Hi folks, I'm finally back here for Rubber Mold Man. I apologize for taking so long to uh, get back on these videos. Uh, when I started doing these videos and selling my molds online last year, I had no clue how busy things were going to get. Uh, so it's been kind of crazy the last few months. We've had to kind of reorganize and uh, move to a new location so we could accommodate the orders. And we're getting on top of things now and ready to move forward. So I'm uh, going to be starting up my videos again. So this video followed by uh, the uh, video uh, on the part two on how to paint the pelican, which a lot of people have been asking me for. I'm finally going to get going. And then after that, I plan to have videos about three to four times a month uh, about how to paint statuary, different things about molds. Uh, so make sure to subscribe if you want to keep up to date on the videos uh, with all the tips and tricks on how to use uh, rubber molds and making concrete statuary as well as the painting. Um, and again, always uh, remember to go to my website, rubbermoldman.com. Uh, it'll be in the description under this video. Uh, that website will have uh, most of the molds that I make and sell personally. It will also have uh, where you can find my molds at other locations such as on eBay. That's the easiest way to keep up to date because I have different people that sell for me and I don't know where else to update uh, as easily as on my website. So again, rubbermoldman.com, that's where you can see a lot of my molds, where you can contact me directly via email and make purchases as well. Anyway, this particular uh, video is to answer a question that a lot of people have sent me about how to tighten up the seam on uh, certain rubber molds. Now, a lot of rubber molds are going to be like this one here, to where you have a fiberglass shell that holds the actual rubber mold in place. Now this particular rubber mold, and this is of a mermaid sitting, very popular piece, it has a seam in the back so that when you know it's poured upside down and then after the concrete hardens you would peel off the rubber by opening up this seam thus allowing the rubber to peel off the statue. Now most times on a mold with a seam like this when you peel this off the statue itself is going to have a line in the back where the seam was. That's just part of uh, uh, working with a mold with a seam in it. There's really nothing you can do about it. Um, some of the molds, it's so tight that it's paper thin. Most times you're going to have to work with it a little bit. One of my older videos shows you how to grind them down and fill it with cement to make those uh, edges go away. Sometimes, though, the seam just gets a little wide in parts and there's not much you can do about it. Now, it's usually on bigger rubber molds. I've got this small one here as an example, but it, it's usually a bigger rubber mold because when they're poured, especially if it's a big mold, you got to realize that that's a lot of weight with the uh, material in the mold. And even though this might be uh, surrounded by a fiberglass shell, the weight of that material can still push on the seam sometimes and make the seam a little thicker in spots. Not always, but you uh, will often get molds that have a spot here or there where the seam comes out thicker. So I've had people uh, contact me, is there a way to tighten up seams for molds like that? And yes, there is. There's a couple tips I'm going to share with you, both very simple. The first one, and this is the most obvious, but a lot of people just don't know this. You'll see on the mold, of course, it's drilled for bolts to hold it together. And I do recommend using bolts, at least in the seam areas on molds. But a lot of people don't realize you can just use these basic, simple C-clamps to hold a mold together. Very simple and easy. And the nice thing is you're not restricted to where the holes are on the mold. You can put them wherever. So let's say in the middle of this mold it gets a little thicker in the seam right there. We'll maybe uh, put a bolt here and here in the holes and then try putting a clamp right there and tightening it down nice and snug. Not so tight that it's going to break the fiberglass causing a crack or that, but tight enough to where it does squeeze it in a bit. Usually that will uh, make a big difference. But let's say that doesn't make a difference. You've tried that, you use clamps already, and you've still got an area of your seam that is coming out thicker than you like. So I'm going to show you a simple little trick here that a lot of people don't know about, but my family's been using it for years. We're going to pretend on this particular mold that when the statue comes out, she has a thick seam right here in this area of her back. It's not too bad up here, not too bad down here, but let's say it's somewhere in here. So what I'm going to do is mark where I think it's uh, the thickest. So let's just say right there. Obviously I'm pretending here, this mold doesn't really have an issue like that, but we're just going to pretend and say it's there. Okay, now I'm going to take the mold, and in this case I think I'm going to put it, uh, let's see, it'll be this piece here, put it back in here just to hold it. 
and I'm going to take this tool here. Now, you can use a nail, uh, anything that's kind of sharp and metal. Uh, I, I have This is a tool I use when I do sculpting and that, so I have it here. Uh, the point being you want a fairly small but sharp metal object and we're going to heat it up for just a few seconds. So I've got this lighter here. We're just going to get that good and hot because what we're going to do then is poke a little hole through the rubber where we made that mark and I'll show you after that what we're going to do. Now yes you can drill a tiny hole in that problem is uh, if the drill bit gets caught up on the rubber or something like that, it can chew it up. This is a simple way to do it and it's not going to hurt the rubber at all. Okay, that's hot. Now it should just poke right through there. There we go, right through the rubber. We're just going to kind of open that up just a little bit there. And it should have gone right on through there. So you can probably see there, right through. Okay? And that's it for that. Now, at this point, you go ahead and prepare your rubber for casting. So if you're doing concrete, you'll use the proper mold mix that I've talked about in other videos. If you're going to use plaster, of course, you just uh, get some water in there and moisten it. And then, before you put it in the fiberglass, what you're going to do is use one of these. Good old-fashioned paper fasteners. You can get a package of these for like a buck fifty at your local store and you get a ton of them. Now these are the ones that have the longer prongs on them. You can use the shorter ones, I just prefer these. But then all you do is before you put it, the mold in the fiberglass, where you put that little hole through, you're going to feed this through, right on through both sides of the rubber only. Again, this has nothing to do with the fiberglass. Okay, so we've got it through the front and sticking out the back. Then we're going to go ahead and fold this down nice and tight so that now we have that paper fastener through the rubber only and remember only through the seam don't put a hole up here where the actual statue design is going to be that will mess up your mold do it through the seam that will not mess it up then once you do that go ahead and put your mold together as normal that will not be in the way bolt it clamp it do whatever you need to to put your mold together and now when you're ready to pour it, that section that used to let the cement or the water through that caused a thicker seam will now be extra tight. Now there's no guarantee that it's going to make it paper thin, but it's guaranteed to really improve the quality of the seam right there. And here's another thing. I put one there just uh, as an example. Let's say you have a big mold that has a seam that goes all the way around one side and the whole side just seems to come out too thick. You can put as many of these uh, paper fasteners through mold as you need. You don't have to use just one or two. It's not going to hurt your mold. You saw how tiny the hole is. You can't even see it. That's why I put the mark there so I know where they're at. And you can have these up and down the entire length of a seam if need be. It's really up to you. It's not going to hurt the mold. Once you take them out, you know, you, you cast the mold, you pull them out. The only thing you see is the little uh, X mark there. The hole is pretty much non-existent because it's not even a hole, it's just a, a melted slice through the rubber. So that's a simple, easy way to uh, tighten up the seam. It works on pretty much any latex rubber mold with a seam. Again, you only uh, need to do that if you're having a seam that's giving you a bit of trouble. But uh, just keep in mind, a lot of times with molds, uh, with seams, no matter what you do with them, uh, they're going to leak. Obviously the water gets out during the mix and they usually will come out the seam. That's not the fault of the mold. I mean, almost any time the seam is thick, there's a way to remedy it easier with, with the clamps or with the paper fasteners. So try that. Uh, I think you'll be really impressed with the results. And like I said, I've got more videos coming out soon. Um, keep an eye out. I'll have my uh, painting video for the part two of the Pelican, followed by other painting videos and other mold videos. Subscribe to keep on top of them. And remember to check out my website at rubbermoldman.com. Thanks for watching.